Previously, Toyota Lexus's routine was basically to launch the car into the market in the second half of the year, whether it was a brand new product, a replacement product, or a new model year. Now, due to the shortage of supply in the market, Toyota Lexus have more way to play, start receiving orders across the country with just two exhibition cars. The manufacturers take brand new GX and TX coming to Tim here for exhibition tour. I saw that they received a lot of orders. Let's take a look at this GX first. Frankly speaking, if compared with the picture, the appearance of GX is not as fierce as the picture. You can see its entire appearance, although we can see the number is a bit larger than before. When I saw the car face to face, it didn't feel as full as its predecessor. It felt like a scaled down LX with a squared off design. The design of the new GX, as you can see, the light clusters have retained the same design as in the Toyota and Lexus LX. This is a light strip plus a turn signal light strip, including the shape below, which still inherits Toyota's latest design. The grille and the front face have an integrated design and the boundaries are not clear. This is also the latest design style of Lexus starting from RX. The entire cabin has a very distinct and separate design between the front cabin and the passenger cabin. The two cabins do not feel integrated together like before. Now they are just two boxes put together. Moreover, the lines of the front cabin are designed to be very straight. The entire line is mainly straight lines without any rounded feeling. Of course, we can see from this design. In the future, the new LC250 Land Cruiser will probably be the same style. But there may be a family difference in the smallest details. It's also a fixed pedal, which is the same as the previous generation, as you can see, now that I've got the seat turned down. It also has the feeling of a Toyota off-road vehicle with body on frame. It supports your body relatively high and does not feel like you are stuck in it while driving. But you can feel the inside design. It's a lot stiffer, not like the old curved shapes, including the straight lines on the outside and the inside. It's all very stiff. It's actually a three-area LCD display, just like the Toyota one. A little detailed difference. Adjust via the button on the left side. It can also store three memory modes so that when you make based on memory before, three sets of memories set for retrieval. There's also a couple of driving modes, sport, eco, normal, and it's filled with a lot of common parts from the Toyota and Lexus families. On this version of the GX, it doesn't utilize the latest Lexus family. The steering wheel buttons, the ones that link to the head-up display, they don't. Using the traditional Lexus steering wheel buttons, including the shifter, you know, like this GX, it's not using the new electronic shifter that's in the Lexus and Toyota family, but the central screen inside is integrated with the air conditioner. This system is the latest version of the Lexus family. The design of the center console is also very straight and formal. As we've seen from the pictures, the design is also straight lines, and there's a small design on the top. When you slide this little flap off, there's a 12 volt charger jack inside, and it's not clear what the trim it is. It doesn't say what the configuration it has. It uses an automatic anti-glare inside rear view mirror. The sunroof, and it's not a big sunroof, the sunroof is a small one. The feel of the seats is frankly very similar to the previous generation GX. The length of the seat, the back support, the projection of the seat edges. I feel that seat is basically the same as the previous generation GX, and there is not much difference. Then I feel that the design of the mirror is particularly narrow. The mirror of the last generation is not very wide either. But the mirror is a little narrower than its predecessor, and it's a little long and vertical, and it might be better if it was a little wider. Everywhere you can touch is made of leather, including the bottom, which is wrapped in half leather, not pure plastic, so it's still a good feeling. Door switches are not currently... The Lexus family of electronic switches, they are still mechanical, and by the way, you're at this price point, look at the steering wheel. It's still a manual four-way, the last generation was a power four-way, the second row feels similar to the last generation GX, and in fact, the second row seats of body on frame don't feel much different across Toyota family. There's a man-made, it's a theater effect, a heightened effect. The line of sight in the second row will be slightly higher than in the first row, but the high is not exaggerated. The seats feel similar to the previous generation. They're not very thick. Cushion is a little bit short. The second row of seats will be slightly thinner than the first row and not as thick. The rear air conditioner is separately zoned and has two Type-C charging ports. The raised floor is relatively small and not too big in middle. The vents are now in same position with the previous generation. I don't know if you can see it through the video. The stowage and shape of the third row of seats is basically the same as the previous model. 
I believe the feeling of sitting in it is almost the same. There are too many people today, so I won't sit in it. When we get the car, we will take a closer look. I'm guessing the third row of this car won't be very promising. So if this GX has a five seat version, I think it would be more ideal. The third row of seats should be useless. The feel of the trunk, with the third row of seats open, it's actually not too far off from the last GX. As you can see, the manufacturers are very good at what they do. They made a crate here to cover up the lack of trunk space with the third row of seats open. Putting some dumbbells in the box tells you how much it can bear. But in fact, what it wants to avoid is the problem of insufficient trunk space. With the third row of seats down, you can see that the space is very good, and that's the same problem with the previous generation GX. The third row of seats for this GX, if you want space, you just put the seats down and it's fine. When the second row and third row are folded down at the same time, you can see that there is a height difference behind them. The height difference is not too big. The second row of seats has a slight upward slope, but overall it's pretty flat. Frankly speaking, when I sit in it, I don't feel any difference from Grand Highlander, except that it has some Lexus-specific design elements. The rest of it feels basically very, very much the same. The seats, the space, it doesn't feel too different from Grand Highlander, which we've got a very detailed video of, but you can feel that the materials in this car are much better, including the door panels, which have a one-piece connection to the center console. It's made of leather, which is very nice to the touch. Compared to the Grand Highlander, the workmanship on this door feels a little better, including the Mark Levinson stereo, including the skin material inside, including the handle inside. The handles on the outside are electronic, not mechanical like Grand Highlander. Another thing following the Lexus family integrate the air conditioner and central large screen and it's not a separate control like the Grand Highlander. The electronic gear shifter is now a common part of the Lexus family, also in Toyota family. The two cup holders in the center are quite unique. It can be taken out just like dice cup. It's an interesting design. Center armrest can be opened both to left and right is a difference with Grand Highlander. The armrests are huge and velvet lined all around, including the underside, and they're very nicely done. And I'm guessing that this car is not going to be a low trim in family. But the lumbar support, the driver's seat has a two-way lumbar adjustment, not a four-way adjustment. A rear view mirror camera, but not powered up, I can't tell. The second row also feels similar to Grand Highlander. And as we can see from the materials used in the second row, it's better than it. There's a curtain, air conditioning controls in the center, not too many floor rises, and these aren't too far off from Grand Highlander. As you can see, the second row seats on Grand Highlander are completely manual, but on this car, it's got a button on the shoulder. Actually, the Honda Pilot has buttons on the side, on the shoulder. If you're looking for buttons for the second row of seats in Toyota lineup, oh, wow! You have to come up to TX to find it. With the third row of seats down, as you can see, the space is still very good, and the whole back platform is very flat. Essentially, it's enough for daily living. After folding down the second row seats, the space becomes even better. It's basically the same as Grand Highlander. It has a third row seat with power control. As you can see, today's two cars are a GX and a TX. It seems that everyone still has a soft spot for GX more. Basically, more people are watching this GX. I've been waiting here since 8 o'clock this morning. I thought there would come a time when no so many people. But it's noon right now. It's still very crowded, so I'm going to stop waiting. I can't do it anymore. We'll talk more about it when we get a vehicle. Overall, GX's product strength is relatively strong. We can also guess what LC250 looks like. Through GX, both of them should act awesome. All depends on the price, of course. We'll talk about it when the price comes out, because talking about the car without the price is just no sense. So let's just wait and see what the price is. And TX is more luxury than Grand Highlander. Overall, mechanically and in terms of space, there's not much difference between these two. TX is a little more luxurious, including more features. So, since there's so many people here today, we're going to leave and we'll talk about it when we get the car. Thanks for the video.